Neighbor's Choice returns. I'm your host, David Gronoski. Hope you're doing well. One of the things we like to do is our sub-series on our podcast and radio show called Seed Oil Survival. SOS, Seed Oil Survival, where we're trying to understand how to heal and how to get past so much of the dysfunction in our bodies caused by these vegetable oil products like canola, corn, soybean, safflower, all these different oils that are so ubiquitous in our food system and around the world now because of our presumption that we have a right to tell the world how to, to feed themselves and, and do it the way we tell them. Uh, and one of the areas in which it's been apparently obvious that the wreckage that vegetable oils and, and generally high PUFA, that's polyunsaturated fatty acids, that's the fatty acid that's in the vegetable oils that makes them problematic for people in excess. Uh, one of the things that it's caused is this skyrocketing obesity problem and uh, my guest now is someone who has made it his mission to understand just exactly what is going on with obesity he, he believes it has a lot to do with the vegetable oils that's the key issue but there's other parts to it in terms of understanding how to heal from this matter he's a molecular biologist pig farmer butcher food historian brad marshall how you doing sir Hey, I'm doing well, David. Thanks for uh, having me back on. Yeah, thank you for coming back. And, you know, I've got this, uh, I'm going to just kind of go try to get a, a simplified takeaway from some of the la- latest posts since we last had you on, one of which is about um, uh, vitamin B6. You were listing the top foods in vitamin B6 per cate- uh, per calorie, but just tell us, What's important about vitamin B6? You're, as a molecular biologist, why should we be interested in vitamin B6? Yeah, and so the last post was about vitamin B6, and uh, in the last video um, on Fire in a Bottle YouTube. And, and, and so that is, well, it's also a follow-on to a previous one that I did about vitamin B12 and, and uh, folate, which is actually vitamin B9. And, you know, what's interesting about these vitamins is that you know, they're, they're involved in all kinds of, you know, really important fundamental biochemical pathways, right? Um, one of them is this thing called methylation um, that people may have heard of. But, you know, th- this is like a very uh, fundamental, uh, you know, very basic part of biology that, that is really, really, really important, right? You need to be able to... Um, properly methylate, you know, move these methyl groups around. And and the key players in that um, in that process are vitamin B6, vitamin B9, like I say, and, and vitamin B12. Um, and that's really interesting because, well, for, for a couple of different reasons. You know, one is that um, you actually need both um, sort of plant and vegetable-based foods to get realistically most of us need to get uh you know foods from both kingdoms to, to meet your uh b6 because because folate vitamin b9 comes mostly from plant sources things like leafy greens uh things like legumes although uh you can although liver is also a very good source um to eat beef liver or pork liver and then um things like b12 are almost exclusively from animal sources um, you know, meat is a good source. And, um, but what's very interesting about all three of them, uh, B6, as you were saying, uh, in the recent post is, so potatoes are a very good source of, of vitamin B6. And, you know, one of the things I like to think about is food history and sort of the traditional American diet. And, um, one of the things, you know, Americans traditionally ate a lot of potatoes. So I showed in the last video, 
uh, kind of documentary evidence from the USDA that farm families in the 1930s uh, ate perhaps as much as two pounds of potatoes, you know, per person per day. Um, and that was a lean, you know, that, that was a lean uh, society back then. And uh, people don't necessarily associate potatoes with leanness. But, um, but what you see is potatoes are great sources of vitamin B6. And vitamin B6 is low in uh, traditionally vitamin B6 is very low in people who go in for bariatric surgery. Um, you see a lot of, uh, you know, obese people are very low in all, all, all three of these vitamins, actually, uh, folate, B12, and B9 are all vitamins that people who go in to for bariatric surgery who are very overweight are, are typically low in, 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 you know, at least one and perhaps all three of these. But you really only have to be low in one because, you know, all three of them work together, right? And it's like the weakest link in the chain. Um, and so you see a lot of times vegans are might be low in in vitamin B12 and uh people on a more keto diet might be low in in folate and uh right and so so you see a lot of kind of shared connections between all of these vitamins um and so and so I, I you know I find that very interesting and so you know I've been looking at like um I've been taking uh, cookbooks about Appalachia and, like I say, documentary uh, documents produced by the USDA to look at really what what did people eat and how were they getting balanced amounts of these of these B vitamins. Um, and so what you see is you know people put a lot of emphasis on foods that had a lot of folate, like um, uh, like greens and beans, and then at the same time people. You know, put a lot of emphasis on on potatoes, which are a great source of vitamin B six, and milk was kind of ubiquitous in culture. and And milk is actually a great source of vitamin B twelve, but interestingly, it also helps you absorb folate from vegetable based foods. And so, um, you know, the, the classic kind of traditional American diet is really high in all of those vitamins, uh, B six, B nine, and folate. And so that that seemed to lead to, uh, you know, a very lean, um, I talk about this on, on the blog a lot, but, you know, there's a lot of evidence looking at photos from, um, you know, the 1940s, 50s, 60s, that Americans were traditionally very lean. Um, it, you know, it's only in recent years that ob- obesity has become a problem. And one of the la- one of the things I talk about in this last video is the fact that so, so one thing that's happened over the past 20 years is the rise in these energy drinks, um, things like Red Bull and, you know, Monster and, you know, people know what they are, right? And one of the things that the energy drinks have is they're supplemented with a ton of B vitamins, like a 12-ounce Red Bull has, uh, I think it's 360% of the U.S. recommended daily allowance of vitamin B6. And so, you know, I argue in my blog post that the vitamin B6 is is crucial, right? It's a, it's a necessary, obviously, it's a vitamin, right? It's necessary for good health. It uh, It's low in people who are obese. And there's evidence that increasing the amount of vitamin B6 um can perhaps probably help you get out of obesity. Certainly in mouse studies, uh, vitamin B6 can reverse uh, obesity in mouse-fed a diet that's meant to fatten them. But on the other hand, the B6 kind of needs to be balanced with uh, the other B vitamins, folate and vitamin B12. And so, you know, these energy drinks are providing an incredible amount of, um, you know, of, B, of certain B vitamins, but not in a not in a balanced way. And you know, there's some evidence um, that that this is actually contributing to the kind of you know <laughs> sort of unbalanced. Uh, I'm just going to eat a lot of this one or two. B vitamins is kind of throwing right throwing the whole system out of whack, 
and that perhaps uh, more people are actually ending up uh, seeking out bariatric surgery who have been consuming a lot of these energy drinks. Um, and, and if you look at the numbers, it, it suggests maybe even more so than traditionally people eating soda or something, which is, you know, a lot of sugar, but not this kind of mega dosing of B vitamins, right? Um, and so basically, you know, the, the traditional diet was was providing these B vitamins. You know, if you sit down and you have a meal with greens and beans and potatoes and milk, you're getting, you know, you're getting a very balanced um, selection of these B vitamins. And that seemed to tend towards leanness. But today, you know, if you're chugging uh, monster drinks, you're getting a lot of sugar and you're getting certain of the B vitamins, but you're not getting the full spectrum. And so, uh, you know, it, it looks to me like this, this is perhaps causing real problems uh, with obesity. And so, you know, it's sort of both. Uh, we probably, I think a lot of us, if you're obese, you might need more B vitamins, but you might not want to get them from, you know, drinking Red Bull. <laughs> so would that, that include being cautious towards uh, just taking a vitamin B complex supplement? Is that going to the synthetic versions of these things not going to be very effective for getting your good vitamin B? It, yeah, yeah, and, and it's interesting. Um, yes, they're not effective or they are? <laughs> well, I don't I, – I think, you know, I, to me, I would say – 100% try to balance your B vitamins with your diet. Um, you know, I, I just think that's a better approach. I, I think that, um, you know, with vitamins, I mean, I, I'm not sure that the, you know, right. Who, who designed the vitamins, right? right? And what did they know? And, and, and you don't really know that. Right. And so there's, I'm sure there's a thousand different formulations out there. Um, and I just, you know, uh, sometimes <laughs> vitamins can have very different effects if you take them in excess. You know, I think there's a sort of a biologically appropriate window. And if you go over that, um, so so I talk about um, on my blog this, this uh, nuclear receptor system. And nuclear receptors are things that kind of um, – they're taking in cues from the environment, and they're affecting what your what your genes are doing and what enzymes you're expressing and and things like this. And so they're they're kind of like it's they're almost, it's almost like another sense, you know. You can see with your eyes and you can hear with your ears, but you also have these nuclear receptors, and they're looking for chemicals in your bloodstream, and they're you know they're reacting according to what they see. And so sometimes if you see a um, you know, you see the sort of the right amount of B vitamins in the bloodstream and you're like, okay, that looks pretty good. Um, and then, but they can get triggered by, you know, if you're taking like huge amounts of supplements and kind of pharmaceutical grades of B vitamins, it can potentially trigger these uh, nuclear receptors in ways that we don't understand and that we don't necessarily want, right? It, it might be dangerous. And I think that's why when you look at studies of people taking supplements um, or, or people taking, like you say, uh, like, like multivitamins or B-complex vitamins, um, you know, when they look at studies of them, they don't, they don't typically perform very well, right? Like people, people who eat balanced diets, come out in studies looking much better than, you know, people who eat, who eat junk food and taking a B-complex vitamin, right? And and maybe that's just because they're eating junk food, but um, but I don't think the studies really show that, that these B-complex vitamins are really that great for you. Um, and I suspect that that's why. I suspect that, you know, eating, when you take a vitamin, they're usually at like... 10 times the amount of B vitamins that you would get in your food. And I think that these nuclear receptors can, can sense that and think like, well, this, you know, they're probably just confused. They're like, I don't, we, we're not right. We didn't evolve to see this many B vitamins in the bloodstream and we're not really sure how to react to it. 
and it might be causing more, you know, this kind of like mega dosing philosophy um, might be causing more problems than, uh, yeah, than, than just, uh, right, g- getting a balanced diet, right? Yeah. So what, what you said that potatoes are big with vitamin B6, anything else that you, people might, fruits or yeah, I mean, liver? Yeah, so there's a lot of things. So, so uh, vitamin B6 is, is also a very, like uh, most, any lean meats are a great source of vitamin B6. So um, definitely beef and pork. Uh, I'm sure, I think chicken is as well. Um, and then... From best, uh, you know, from the plant kingdom, uh, potatoes are a great source. Um, sweet potatoes are very good. Squash is very good, and actually, uh, chili peppers are very good. Um, interestingly, there's a lot of new world things, foods from the Americas. Uh, potatoes, sweet <laughs> sweet potatoes, chili peppers, squash are all very high in vitamin B6. That's, that's probably just coincidence, but it's just uh, something that I've noticed looking at all the plants. Um, yeah, and so those are, those are good. You know, I think eggs are good. Um, those, are, those are probably mostly the best sources, yeah. Uh, you know, I mm. wanted to ask you, you know, you mentioned potatoes being potentially helpful, I guess, for people with obesity. People tend to think of potatoes as fattening. You know, you mentioned that. Uh, people used to eat tons of potatoes in the past, you know, and I, and I, um, you know, even I've, I've talked to a lot of the folks that are influenced by Ray Pete's uh, work and they tend to even say, you know, uh, there are good things about potatoes, but if you're dealing with obesity, you may not want those types of starches. Rather, you would want to do stuff like uh, pro thyroid, pro metabolism fr- fr- foods, uh, like fruits, like orange juice and fruits that are, uh, tropical fruits and very ripe. Um, how do you explain, like, wh- where do you fall on that discussion? You know, because it seems like some people say, no, you eat potatoes, you're going to get fat. And then other people say, no, yeah, you want to eat the fruits if you want to actually lose weight if you're having struggles with obesity. Yeah, so there's a very interesting phenomenon. Um, and and you, can, you can look it up online. So people have been doing this thing called the potato diet. And in the potato diet, you you know you literally try to get you, you essentially you just eat potatoes, right? Um, and, and many people have have reported phenomenal weight loss uh, from the potato diet. And you know you can I mean just Google the potato diet, you'll you'll find out all about it, right? Um, and you know when you look at again when you look at traditional cultures. Um, you know, the Irish diet or even the traditional American diet, it was very heavy in potatoes, potatoes and milk, right? Potatoes and milk was a classic combination. And, you know, one of the interesting things about potatoes is that, um, you know, so there's different starches out there, right? Uh, You know, pasta, um, bread, obviously. Um, And potatoes are actually pretty low, are, are surprisingly low, in calories too and kind of density so they seem starchy and they're very filling but you know what's interesting is if you um if you sort of thought about how many potatoes you know i calculated out and i don't know the number off the top of my head but i think i was trying to figure out how many how many potatoes you would have to actually eat to get a you know 2500 calories or whatever kind of most people would eat need in a day and it was it was like eight pounds of potatoes or something. You know you know what I mean? Like those potato those bags that they sell at the grocery store are usually like a five pounds of potatoes. So for me to get my caloric needs for the day, I would have to eat like a bag and a half of those. So I so I think there's a couple things. And there's also a um this interesting study from the late nineties, I think, and no one's repeated this, which I think is unfortunate. Um they did this thing called the satiety index. Or the satiety index, and they they basically they they fed people different foods, and then they you know they basically would, so people would come into the lab or whatever, and they'd feed them you know 500 calories of you know whatever it would be potatoes or the next guy they would give pasta or the next guy they would give beef, um, and then basically the idea was the people would would just hang out and then 
tell them like when they were hungry again, right? And so the idea was like, okay, given X number of calories in this food, how long is it before you get hungry again? And the potatoes did phenomenally well um, in this study. And so, you know, potatoes have been shown to be one of the most satiating foods. Um, they're also very high in vitamin B6, as I said, which is which is triggering these kind of um, nuclear receptor signals to kind of help you lose weight. And, you know, one of the things that people with obesity are low in, and then with this sort of modern trend of, of the potato diet, and then, you know, you look at historical diets that involved a lot of potatoes, people seem to be lean. And so I, I think, you know, overwhelmingly, to me when I look at it, the evidence is that, uh, you know, potatoes are probably okay, but, you know, that doesn't mean go down to McDonald's and order some French fries because, you know, that's a confounder. So there's a lot, there's a lot of studies online about, um, about, you know, they look at, okay, well, uh, do pe- do people who eat a lot of potatoes, are they more or less likely to have diabetes or are they more or less likely to be obese? But the problem with those studies is that uh, in America, when people eat a lot of potatoes, that usually means they're eating a lot of French fries, right? And so they're getting a lot of vegetable oils along with the potatoes, and they're getting the worst kinds of vegetable oils, which is the vegetable oils that have gone into deep fryers, and they're now heavily oxidized, and the oils are breaking down. And so um, so potatoes are, so potato consumption is really hard to study in America because mostly they're eating this French fries. Um, and so it's a, uh, yeah, so it's a tricky thing to study. Does that mean that you should avoid fats in general with potatoes if you're uh, overweight or should you just put good fats like butter or coconut oil with your potatoes? Well, you know, I think there's a, um, I'm, I'm, I'm unfortunately, I'm, I'm spacing on the name of the researcher who did these, who did this research, but there is some, some, uh, Science that suggests that um, there are – they did these studies in mice, but they fed the mice kind of like uh, diets that were low in fat or diets that were very high in fat or very, in very uh, low in starch or like all the way through the middle. So, right, like one diet was like 90% starch, 10% fat. And then they did 80-20 and 70-30 and 60-40 and 50-50 all the way the other way, right? And, and what they actually found was that um, diets that were very the, – the mice who got the fattest were eating diets that were like 50-50, right, combinations of, of starch and fat. And so, um, you know, if you extrapolate that to humans, you could argue to eat a sort of a low-fat potato-based diet – or if you want to go the other way, you could eat a low carbohydrate uh, diet with healthy fats, which I would say would be the more saturated fats and avoid polyunsaturated fats. But um, so yeah, I think if you went, if you wanted to lose weight with potatoes, I would suggest doing a more low fat version of a diet. So what's clear, one takeaway we probably can have with this conversation uh, for folks who are overweight. You can't do high carb and high fat, even if it's good fats, if you're trying to stop that problem, right? <laughs> it's probably not going to work too long, too well. Yeah, that's, that's probably good advice for most people, I would think. Well, thanks again, Brad. Uh, Marshall, always great to hear from you. Anything you'd like to share with us upcoming on your website or any of your uh, different products? Yeah, you know, I would just tell people to, to, to watch the uh, Fire in a Bottle YouTube channel. I've got a whole bunch of fun videos coming out, and that's where you'll, that's where the most of the action is happening these days. Well, very good. Uh, again, it's uh, always interesting to learn about ways that we can survive these seed oil problems that have happened to this nation and the whole world, as listeners around the world can attest. Uh, many countries are, are saturated with these problems. Uh, these problematic yeah. foods and, and the different uh, effects of them like obesity. So I appreciate your work that you're doing and we will stay in touch with your latest uh, posts and, and uploads on Fire in a Bottle. All right. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you. All right.
You can email me hello at a neighbor's I'm David Gronoski. Godspeed.